This is now section two, value streams and processes, this dimension of the item practice. Here we will understand and apply the processes of the practice. There are three processes in this practice, and we will delve into the inputs, outputs, activities of each of these three processes, and also apply how to integrate the practice into the organization's value streams. The three processes are, the first is to manage a common approach to IT asset management. The second one is to manage the IT asset lifecycle and records. And the third is to verify, audit, and analyze IT assets. So it's concerning the approach, the day-to-day -day management, and the verification and auditing. We will look at the processes one by one. The first process is to manage a common approach to IT asset management. This process is focused on ensuring the different elements of the organization adopt a common approach to ITAM. So this supports value co-creation by enabling efficient and effective communication of the ITAM outputs across the organization and making it easier for the organization to ensure compliance with both internal and external requirements. There are two key things here the benefits of this process. One, the communication. Second, compliance. And now for this process, we will look at this table of inputs, activities, and outputs. For the exam, you will need to remember them, but then you don't have to really memorize each entry or item here, but have a good understanding of this. Because it's about the process to manage a common approach to item, Therefore, the key outputs would be the approach itself and also the creation of the IT asset register for the first time. And then it needs to be communicated. The item communications uh, we need to occur and certain knowledge articles need to be created for training purposes. And then uh, there will be some requests for changes and implementation initiatives to bring in the approach, to implement the approach. And also when the approach is reviewed for improvement, there will be some requests for changes possible. And uh, at the time, there will be item approach performance reports before any changes are proposed to adjust the approach and its implementation. In terms of inputs, uh, a whole lot of environmental inputs are needed, such as the IT strategy and plans, uh, the list of prioritized IT services of the organization, the industry and vendor trends, the organization policies and external compliance requirements, also the tools that are available in the market, out-of-box uh, features, uh, both for ITAM and ITSM, and uh, what are the international item standards and best practices, and also any existing IT asset data. Not in the form of an IT asset register, but maybe in other formats such as documents and uh, spread out information throughout the organization. There are four activities in sequence. The first one being to analyze stakeholders' requirements and IT asset risks. Second, to define and agree the ITAM approach based on the requirements. And once the approach is defined and agreed, it needs to be communicated and integrated or implemented into the organization's value streams. And then periodically, there needs to be some review of the approach functioning. And uh, based on that, they maybe need to adjust the item approach and the procedures. This is a simple depiction of the process as it goes from one activity to another, just as I read it on the previous slide. And as you can see here, the, some of the key outputs in this process are the IT asset management approach and then the request for changes uh, and the implementation uh, initiatives uh, in order to implement the approach. And uh, as a result of the review, the output would be the item approach performance reports. So let us now get into each of these uh, activities in more detail. Now you can read this uh, on your own as well, but I'm going to kind of uh, translate the detailed text here in the right column into uh, um, a more summarized version. So the first activity uh, is to analyze stakeholders requirements and IT asset risks. So this is where uh, the analysis uh, happens. Um, it is basically analyzing the um, against the industry trends and uh, whether uh, the, um, there is alignment with the organization's plans, the trends in the industry and the other practices in the industry and so on. And once this analysis is done, uh, by analysis, we mean analysis of the IT assets 
against the organization's strategy and plans. And uh, based on this, this, the risks and opportunities need to be identified. For example, there may be lack of certain IT assets and there may be an uh, overwhelming presence of certain other IT assets. Uh, and uh, certain actions uh, need to be noted down because this information will be useful in the next step of defining the item approach. Therefore, during this step, there'll be uh, interviews, uh, workshops, uh, questionnaires, surveys, etc., to understand the stakeholders' uh, requirements and uh, their priorities. And also there can be these uh, channels to even identify the risks. So the next step, uh, based on the information derived in the previous step, uh, it goes into defining and agreeing the item approach, scope, data structure, and life cycle models. So here, uh, what does the approach really include? These are some bullets mentioned here. Uh, the approach can define the criticality of item for the organization and what information and how much detail will be required on the IT assets. Then. Um, how much resource investment is needed for item or will be invested and what information needs to be captured and updated um, and uh, what will be the level of detail with the policies and procedures because it's an approach and not the actual policies and procedures. And though they will come in eventually as well in the approach. And uh, so th this is the starting point to start thinking about the approach and probe stakeholders regarding the approach. And the other things need to be probed are how the scope of item will expand and what organization structures are needed to support item. Then further continuing on the same activity of creating the item approach and agreeing to it. Um, in terms of the considerations for the approach, we also see at the top here, uh, it needs to be understood how the IT asset tracking will be done and how frequently inventory will be done for different types of assets. Also, the, it's good to use a standard uh, such as an ISO 19770, which is an IT asset management standard from ISO. And uh, during this step, the IT asset register is also created. And uh, it is important that the data structures that are created uh, for the uh, IT asset register in particular are uh, conducive for easy future modifications. And uh, the approach itself will have sections uh, such as the following. Uh, what are the descriptions of the various uh, the outcome uh, desired from the practice, the item practice? What are the various IT asset types to be included in the scope of this practice? What kind of reports are needed? What kind of information is needed, which will be quite uh, important 